Okay, hey guys, uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Trevin Cravite, and with the release of MK1, okay, I thought that it could be fun to check out what existed within the 3D era of PS2 Mortal Kombat games. Now, uh, just thought we'll take a look at some some of the easy call the content that was there. First, first we just head over to the characters. Okay, <clears throat> you know, this game had lots of different characters, like, it had lots of them, so let's just take a look at them. Okay, I guess we can even take a look at their costume, like, okay, this Quan Chi, uh, okay. Okay, basically, his dialogue says that he had stumbled across the ancient mummified army of the long-forgotten Dragon King. Dragon, the Dragon King is called Onag. So writing on the king's sarcophagus had revealed that the army was invincible and that it could be revived. Okay, basically he struck a deal with, the, with Shang Tsung, who is the sorcerer supreme of this MK universe. And they plan to resuscitate the, how is he called? The long forgotten army of the Dragon King so as to be able to, how is he called? To take over the world because they're the deadly alliance. Okay. There was somehow a deal that was involved since it states that Quan Chi struck a deal with the sorcerer Shang Tsung to resuscitate the army Baba in return for the constant supply of souls. Uh, the constant supply of souls his amulet could unlock from a gateway to the heavens. Okay, I guess that's the law. Okay, basing on his costume, that uh, Shinox amulet seems seems to be on his chest and. Uh, you know, Quan Chi usually spots like dark colors, like dark bluish, dark greenish, black, grey. You can see even his face is paler with some sort of, uh, how is he called, these red tattoos and something like that. This is basically MK4 Quan Chi, I guess. And I guess, we we'll, okay, I didn't know the reason as to why his skin was pale, but I guess it's because of what we saw in MK1. Basically, Quan Chi's skin is pale because, uh, you know, Emak absorbed some some of his life force or something like that. So that's why he became pale. Maybe it symbolizes him being closer to death. I don't know, something like that. <laughs> okay, leave me. Yo, this MK. Okay. About Li Mei, the Deadly Alliance commanded Keno and his troops uh, to force a small population of people to construct a palace fortress. One of those enslaved was Li Mei, who rebelled against the invaders and attacked Keno himself. Okay, Keno, Keno is a member of the Black Dragon. Oh, okay, I think he was a member of the Red Dragon and later on he, he formed his own version called the Black Dragon and basically allied himself with Shang Tsung and uh, Quan Chi, the Deadly Alliance, so as to be able to, I don't know. You know, basically Keno usually searches for the side that's stronger. And uh, they enslaved Limei's people to build this palace fortress for the Deadly Alliance. Actually, this portion of the story you can actually play it uh, in MK Deception when you use Shujinko in the conquest mode. In some place where you are old Shujinko, you meet Limei in this outworld, in the realm of outworld, and you help uh, Limei deal with this uh, Keno Deadly Alliance problem. So. Recognizing the warrior spirit she possessed, the sorcerer Quan Chi offered to free her people if she could win the Deadly Alliance tournament. The Deadly Alliance Mortal Kombat tournament. If she did not win, however, she would be forced to serve the Alliance and her people will remain slaves forever. Li Mei had no choice but to accept the offer. So, in this game, she just she was helpless since her people were basically held hostage. You know, so, so she had no choice but to serve the Deadly Alliance and to win the Deadly Alliance Mortal Kombat. In MK1, she she's a constable of the Outworld, uh, the Outworld Realm or something like that. She serves under Queen Sindel, and uh, yep, it's a bit different this time since uh, if you go deep into the story, okay, there's a misunderstanding that she was the one, you know who caused the death of King Gerard, who is basically Kitana and Melina's father and uh, Sindel's husband. So basically Sindel and the royal 
the royal family detest her and despise her including the umgad because they think that it was under her watch that king gerald was destroyed but that is the new timeline this is the old timeline in this video just assume we're in one of the many timelines that exists maybe in the past present i don't know <laughs> but basically Limi's costume looks cool the pink stuff uh, the pink color okay it goes well with the flowers and uh, you know the flowers on the sides of her how is it called the sides of her blouse or something like that yeah i i like her costume yes and uh, nitara 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 okay <sighs> Nitara looks like a gothic vampire, blood sucking ish, uh, human like person here. I don't know. <laughs> Nitara is basically a vampire, and sh normally, uh, how do I say it? Okay, this is her first appearance in the MK games. And, uh, okay, basically, she usually tries to find an orb which can be used to detach her world from the realm of outworld you know okay let's just read them the dialogue okay nitara offered to send cyrax back to earth realm if he could retrieve the orb from its hiding place nitara carried a gemstone around her neck these gemstones made it possible for her people to traverse the realms they had done so for ages and had, had visited earth realm regularly in search of blood she's a vampire so blood makes sense Cyrax had no choice but to accept the offer and journeyed with her to the presumed location of the orb. As they traveled across Outworld, however, they had the strange feeling that they were being followed. Okay. That tidbit there about the strange feeling of being followed. Like, <laughs> again, I think most of this stuff will be tied to Shujinko's conquest mode in MK Deception. When you play, okay, when you roam around some bits okay when you roam around the nether realm in the region of nether realm in the conquest mode in mk deception when you get near some sort of a bridge i don't know if it's a bridge or something like that you can actually see nitara and cyrax uh having noticed you and disappearing into let's say teleporting somewhere else so as to be able to escape you so basically you are the one who was following them Okay, it was a, mis a misunderstanding that Shujinko was following them, but it was just a coincidence. That's how I think of it. And basically, okay, in MK1, she's in the new MK1, and I think her goal is still the same, searching for the orb which could, you know, uh, which could detach her world from Outworld. Okay, this concept of Outworld, yeah. Her realm was merged with Outworld in one of the past Mortal Kombat, I guess. So, it was either done, okay, lawfully or unlawfully. I guess it was done unlawfully, so she's actually trying to detach her realm from Outworld and also searching for food in the human realm, so we must be careful not to get bitter. <laughs> she might be in some dark alley waiting to, you know, feast on your blood or something like that. <laughs> Okay, next it's Shang Tsung. Okay. Shang Shang. Okay, this guy is the deadly sorcerer. He's, he was actually the the original boss of the first Mortal Kombat in the year 1990-something, I don't know. Shang Tsung is originally from Earthrealm, but he betrayed Earth to go and... Uh, do his evil deeds in the outworld in the realm of outworld so you know collaborating with uh, evil forces such as shao khan and the other guys the other bad guys in outworld so in this game is a part of the deadly alliance you know when he teamed up with kwan 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 chi so the sorcerer shang Tsung was imprisoned in the depths of shao khan's fortress punished for failing to win the mortal combat tournament in earth realm I'm guessing this was the first MK, or maybe the second or third MK. Periodically, he was released to perform tasks for the Emperor Shao Kahn until he eventually regained Shao Kahn's favor and was given his freedom. But when you give Shang Tsung something good, something bad will be will happen to you in return, probably. So he remained in outward risking his life to drain the souls of the combatants in order to sustain his youth. All this changed one day when the Sarah Shang. Ah, 
<laughs> this is a Quanchi returned from Nether Realm. So basically, the capability of these guys sucking out souls, you know, like Nitara, you know, blood is to Nitara, souls is to Shang Tsun. Shang Tsun feasts on the souls of people, and uh, Minatos and Centaurs and and uh, Chokans, you know, basically anything that has a soul. When he consumes a soul, he becomes younger and he can be able to manipulate his age. You know, it's just a way to deceive someone, something like that. So he can change his, the way he looks. He can look like an older Shang Tsun or a younger Shang Tsun or something like that. So, yeah, this guy is the big bad. He's Lu Kang's rival or let's say, how do you say it? Nemesis, yeah, Nemesis. So his costume is just... Okay, I think it signifies it's it shows it's his snake like a character like you know he's like a snake he can just destroy you from whatever place or whatever angle if you're not careful around him. Basically, if you make deals with this guy, it's bound to fail. So that is if he doesn't think of outsmarting you in any way. Next is Keno. Oh, I didn't say about okay. I don't know if I like Nitara's costume. Uh, okay, I don't know. It's kind of medium to me. It's a bit weird. I think that's the alternate costume. For Quan Chi, I'm not sure if... I think this was the alternate costume too. This was Li Mei's primary costume. This was Shang Tsung's primary costume if I'm not wrong. So let's go to Keno. Keno, yeah. Keno was originally a member of the Black Dragon. The Red Dragon, I think. As you can see, okay, this information is usually seen in, uh, revealed in Mortal Kombat Armageddon. When you play as, uh, when you play as Taven, and, uh, when you head over to the Red Dragon, the Red Dragon, how is it called, the Red Dragon Lair, you can find Keno trying to escape the Red Dragon's, uh, experiments to turn humans to red dragon lizard man in an effort to make humans more powerful i don't know keno escaped to be escaped the experimentation and headed you know and ran away and later on he formed the black dragon at least that's how i think of it so his appearance you can see some cybernetic parts he's basically like cyborg from the dc universe you know young not young justice okay young justice teen titans and justice league cyborg but he's not fully cyberized, you know, he's not a cyber link way. Okay, Keno had rema remained in Outworld and served as general of Shao Kahn's military. After re the retreat from Earthrealm, for years he enjoyed the power of commanding the greatest army in Outworld, but Shao Kahn's power was fading and there was a chance that Kitana's forces might spell the Emperor's undoing when the Sosaras, Shang Tsung and Quan Chi confronted Shao Kahn in a surprise attack, Keno decided not to interfere and remained hidden in the shadows to ally with the winning side. You know, as I had said, this guy usually allies with the stronger, the stronger side that may, you know, may seem, you know, he allies with the stronger guys, okay, the stronger people with whom he can benefit, so something like that. Once Shao Kahn was defeated, Keno offered his allegiance to the Deadly Alliance. So he basically betrayed Shao Kahn in favor of uh, teaming up with the deadly alliance okay for keno it's all about survival like uh this guy is basically a criminal in earth and you can see like basically he's a human you know apart from the parts where he looks like terminator or cyborg he's basically a human like shang Tsung, but he likes to operate in outworld you know doing his criminal stuff in outworld <laughs> but as a criminal, you can't trust him entirely. You have to prove that you are greater than the competition if you want to keep allying with him. Though that's Keno. He's usually a, a pain in the ass to characters like Sonya Blade and Jax. Yep. Yes. I like his costume though. This costume, I think, is his original costume in Mortal Kombat 1. And I'm not sure if it's his alternate costume or uh, primary costume in this game. Okay. Princess Kitana. Good lord, this is an alternate costume, I guess. Okay, Kitana. Okay. The sister to Melina, 
uh, the daughter to King Gerald and Wishy Sindel, Queen Sindel. The last of the Emperor Shao Kahn's armies had retreated and it seems to Kitana that a new era of peace orders was at hand, but when a small number of hideous and dead soldiers began to appear under the banner of the sorcerers Shang Sun and Quan Chi, her dreams of returning to the realm of Edenia would have to wait. Okay, she's from Edenia. Edenia is one of the many realms in the Mortal Kombat universe. Okay, just to say it first, the realms in Mortal Kombat are Earth Realm, which is the realm we are in. Outworld, there is Seido, which is Order Realm, and there is its direct opposite Chaos Realm, which which is known for a character like Havoc. And there is also Nether Realm and uh, which other realm? Why the hell am I forgetting the other realm? Bruh. Hmm. I'll remember it. Okay. <laughs> An army clashed the new threat, but was easily cut down by the by the beached weapons that the undead army wielded. The souls of a slain troops left their bodies and flew off into the distance, attracted to a bright green beacon. The green beacon, I think, is a teleportation machine. I don't know, something like that. The Kitana is basically the princess of Outworld, and in later games. Okay, after the first reboot of the universe, she was some of the Khan of Outworld, the rule of Outworld in Mortal Kombat 11. 11? Yeah, I think it's 11. Where she took the the throne from Kotal Khan, who had taken the throne from Melina in a civil law. And Melina had previously taken the, the throne from Shao Kahn. So it's something like that. Shao Kahn, Melina, Kotal and then Kitana. That was how it was in the period between MK10 and MK11, I guess. So Kitana is usually like a love interest to Liu Kang. You know, that's just a side note. This costume is cool. I think it's an alternate costume. Yep, I think these, these are, how is it called? These stuff are just like, I think each of them are divided into two. Like for each character, there are like two origins, depending on the costumes they have. So, just take a look at, just try to go first. Okay, next is Cyrax. Cyrax is a Linkway. The Linkway is a clan of ninjas, you know. Sub-Zero, yeah, Sub-Zero. <laughs> ah, Sub-Zero Smoke, Sector, those kind of guys. So, Cyrax is basically a cyborg ninja. Who regained his youth with the aid of special forces, agents Sonya Blade and Jackson Briggs. I think that happened in MK4. In return of help of their help, he joined the special forces outward investigation agency, which I think Kenshi is also part of, I think. Uh, but the problem is th this guy got lost. I think he got lost. Probably because he was ambushed by you know According to this paragraph, he was ambushed by a reptilian creature, basically reptile. <laughs> his arm console was damaged in the struggle, and with his inter-realm portal technology. So, he couldn't go back, he got stranded, and that's how I think he became acquainted with Nitara. I think. Nitara, the vampire lady. So, he has nothing to lose because Nitara can't suck his uh, his oil stuff, so he's basically safe. He's a cyborg with some sort of dreads a bit. I don't know, they're like cables which function like dreadlocks a bit, like three dreadlocks. <laughs> and you know, the thing I like about him is his, one of his fatalities where he opens up his chest and a bunch of bombs just go onto the ground and blow the entire earth to bits. So that's Cyrax. I like his yellow black coloring. And uh, yep, but I don't like his alternate costume. It looks okay. I get what they are going for, but you'll just we'll just see what it looks like. Next is Sonya Blade. Yo, okay, before even talking about anything else, uh, <laughs> she looks like she has two big balloons on her chest. Like, okay, I get the rendering of the PS2 was a bit. You know, it was an improvement, okay, when you compare it to stuff like PS1, but I guess when you look at it right now with the improvement of technology, it seems a bit off, but it's still okay for that time. Ah, uh, Sonya, Sonya. Sonya is 
is a member of the you know special forces among okay together with the uh, jacks and later on together with the combat kids you know in the future mkx and something like that she later on married johnny cage and got cassie cage but they divorced you know they, they went there you know they parted their ways that's okay i'm talking about mkx i don't know why but for this current sonya okay <clears throat> So Sonya and her team had finished their mission of demolishing any known ancient interrealm portals when she received word from Jax that the agency's portals chambers had been destroyed. You know, with no means for traversing the realm, Sonya realized that there was there were now two agents lost in Outworld. You know, I think Cyrax and uh, okay, the first that had been lost in Outworld is a. Uh, the cyborg ninja Cyrax, which we had just talked about, whom the agency had lost contact with some time ago, and now Agent Kenshi was originally sent to find Cyrax. So, both Kenshi and Cyrax are lost in Outworld and they are trying to find their way, and you know, they are trying to get their means back to Earth Realm with important information to report the special forces. We, I think so. I'm just trying to make their being lost seem relevant. <laughs> She will have to find a way to get into Outworld and bring them home. So she's a caring superior officer and doesn't want her. How <laughs> did say minions? <laughs> she doesn't want her juniors uh, to to get lost or to end up being uh, decapitated. You know how MK Universe is, yeah? fatalities, brutalities. You know, basically she wants to find her minions for safekeeping. If that's how you would like to put it, I don't know. So that is Sonia. I like her big balloons. And uh, what else do I like about her? Uh, yeah, she's basically Sonia, you know, the tough woman. So she's okay. And next is the Hollywood actor Johnny Cage. You can see he looks cocky with his suit on. Huh? He's basically, you know. I think it's from it's from playing a role in one of the movies he does so you know for maximum dramatic effect cage arrived on the island fortress of shang Tsung by the way of parachute <laughs> he glided to the exact place on the beach where raiden had told him to rendezvous with the others you know i think the rendezvous was uh you know raiden has be, had basically you know grouped a bunch of other warriors together after Liu Kang was defeated and, you know, killed by the Deadly Alliance, you know, he assembled the remaining forces in uh, in where Johnny Cage went, and they discussed on the means and how, okay, and the and how they were going to deal with the Deadly Alliance, you know, they were probably they were becoming a bigger threat to to Earth realm, so, you know. They had to assemble the remaining forces that will defend the Earth. When night fell, the Earth Realm combatants lit a fire and discussed the possible strategies to defeat the outward threat. You know, just the like the way I had said. Once the fire had reached its full strength, Raiden finally appeared and revealed to them the events that had led to the formation. The Deadly Alliance. You'll hear the words Deadly Alliance a lot of time on, in this game. So, Cage was called, you know, to a higher calling. You know, he's no longer just acting movies and, and becoming an action star. He's basically becoming a superhero. Uh, kinda, I guess. A superhero who uh, brutalizes uh, warriors from other... What is he called? From other realms, you know. Knocks their balls and punches their head out of their bodies. You know, he basically becomes a brutal warrior and hero who saves the world. But this time with no audience to see it so this is basically like superman or spider-man batman or something like that so and when that endeavor is done he goes back to making movies so you know he's a hero in both fiction and reality literally so that's johnny cage and uh fun fact he has a tattoo you know in the first reboot he had a tattoo of his name on his chest you know signifying he had so much esteem in himself and pride next is boracho before going to boracho cage uh okay in the current iteration of mortal kombat one 
is also part of the you know the good guys who are trying to protect earth from the forces that will try to you know you know from the evil forces that were trying to brew conflict in outworld so it's basically together with Johnny Cage Kung Lao Kenshi and Raiden this time in MK1 Raiden is now Liu Kang and Liu Kang is Raiden so <laughs> if it makes sense so it's basically still a good guy in the new version Boraicho Boraicho the fat man who likes to fart all the time you know <laughs> You know, like literally his movesets contain fats and being drunk literally this guy is a very wise huge person huh he's a very uh how do i say he's a very huge drunk uh, person who's very wise but uh sometimes he can be too disgusting to approach you know especially if you're an, if you're an enemy he can literally pick on you use liquor as a way of Okay, as a means of fighting against you or literally fat in your face like uh, I'm not joking <laughs> so this guy has actually trained renowned warriors like Liu Kang and uh, Kung Lao for the Mortal Kombat tournament he may seem human but he's actually from Outworld so but I don't get why he always farts all the time I guess he was used as a gag in a way but he's literally a wise person you know a guy who don't look young you know you can you can you can think that someone like that was quite dignified but he's actually the opposite a bit you know being stinky and stuff so during the years that Shang Tsung had sponsored the Mortal Kombat 1 tournaments on earth 1 2 and 3 i guess the outworld master Borai Cho was secretly training warriors for competition yo he's a he's a good teacher It's even speculated that it was he who bought okay <laughs> it was he who brought the fighting style of drunken boxing to Arthur. This guy like I said uses a liquor so he uses like you know the drunken fix drunken fist not the drunken fix. Okay after many years he finally discovered the Shaolin monk Lu Kang and taught him the martial arts he needed to defeat Shang Tsung and he also taught him not to be disgusting huh? you know so as to be able to save him luck with the ladies like Kitana later with the tournament securely in the hands of the Shaolin his teachings were no longer needed and he returned to outworld ah that's boraicho for you and another fun fact is that he's also the one who trained Shujinko okay partially you know since Shujinko had powers of copying his opponent's skills thanks to Damashi in MK Deception but in his early days in Shujinko's early days he was actually trained by Boraicho and you can actually you know since you're the one actually controlling Bora not controlling Boraicho since you're the one who is controlling Shujinko in the conquest you can actually go through the trials of a Boraicho as he trains you to okay as he trains you before Shujinko ventures out into the realms to go and uh, collect the kamidogus for damashi which we know was uh, later on discover that was a it was a big deception so so boraicho for you and another weird thing is that in the current mk1 the elderly woman who trained kung lao and uh, raiden uh, since they were young is known as madam bo so uh, so i don't know if it's if she's that version of Boraicho in the new universe or if she's actually related to Boraicho in a way or maybe she's Boraicho's wife I don't know maybe in the new universe Boraicho is a villain I don't know I'm just trying to speculate but basically in the new uni- in, in the new universe uh, we don't see Boraicho we see Madame Bo instead and uh, Madame Bo isn't as disgusting as Boraicho uh, she's actually she actually owns a hotel where people can eat so yep That's Boraicho. Frost, Frost, Frost. Yo. Yo, you know, like <laughs> I remember when we were kids like you know when I would go to watch people play in uh, play Mortal Kombat when we were young. Uh people usually okay. <laughs> people usually thought that Frost was actually, you know, 
being banged by sub zero like people thought sub- frost was actually sub zero's uh, wife so but literally she has the the appeal you know what the hell she's actually attractive like you know she looks cool even in this costume her blue eyes are actually cool the mask looks cool and her prickly uh cold hair looks like it could stab you uh, stab you all the time but yeah i actually like frost as a in terms of design but in terms of her character she's a bit frosty you know like uh you know she can basically stab you in the back so same like that so to all my uh okay to the people who thought sub zero is actually frost's husband it's not that way frost is actually a disciple of sub zero in this timeline in this current timeline so sub zero had reformed the lin kuei clan and held a tournament to recruit the best of the best so actually something weird and uh something weird happened that this mysterious female character named frost was the one who actually won that tournament sub zero had held but weirdly enough is that uh you know it was actually known in those days that the only people who could manipulate ice were the lin kuei clan but she wasn't actually part of the clan at that point in time so sub zero broke the lin kuei traditions as the new grandmaster and he took it upon himself to train frost so uh with his help frost was able to better harness a kori powers kori is the ice powers so sub zero unfortunately was not able to teach her humility and uh, she basically grew more arrogant with time since she thought she had superior fighting skills than than her grandmother something like that but basically she has good looks she's a cool feminine character but her character was a uh, was kind of evil so yes what the hell is left about frost mm. yep she reminds me of that guy okay she reminds me of that weird okay that character in uh the live action the boys the guy who actually oh god should i be sharing this on youtube that guy who fell for a woman who could manipulate eyes only for them to you know to go in bed and uh you know basically the freezing of the woman that that guy fell for fell in love with basically uh, uh chopped off the broomstick you know so the moral of the story is uh women with cold hearts and cold uh, cold vigor should be avoided what the hell stop stop raiden raiden is next <laughs> what the hell uh go and watch the boys you know the boys live action it's actually fun raiden raiden actually raiden actually in this alternate costume looks like his brother fujin okay you know because raiden is usually you know he's usually iconic due to sporting his uh hat the big hat he usually wears and his lightning manipulation So this guy is basically the protector of Arthur Mia. Yeah? He always uh <clears throat> he always talks with the elder gods. Huh? So Raiden reunite okay return to Arthur to reunite with his comrades and inform them of the impending threat from the deadly alliance. Those that accepted his call to arms were instructed to meet him on Shang Tsung's old island fortress located in the Lost Sea. You know it's it, it's basically linking to Johnny Cage's uh story. Once there Raiden did the thing he explained that Outworld's forces were becoming too dangerous to Earth so ha huh. So what else did he do he then summoned Shang Tsung's nether ship from the ocean depths and with it transported both himself and uh, all of the Earthrealm warriors to to where to a celestial portal known only to sorcerers and deities they emerged in Outworld ready for battle So this story is basically Raiden recruiting the Arthurian warriors to go and battle against the deadly alliance. Basically I like this costume, you know. 
I like it as much as the the normal costume, but I, I don't know why. Maybe it's because it's a fresh new take on Raiden, and also his eyes. <laughs> they really look cool. You know, you know, as a kid, I usually thought Mavado was the coolest guy to ever exist. Like the first time I played Deadly Alliance, I was literally like, was it 10 years old? I don't know. <laughs> the first guy I picked to play was Mavado. <laughs> I literally thought this guy was like a, like a Johnny English kind of spy. You know, you know, he doesn't look anything at all like Rowan Atkinson or Mr. Bean. But you know, his cold demeanor. Look at that face, man. This guy looks like he can actually slash your throat in order time to silence you for his organization. You know, okay, basically I thought this guy was the coolest dude. Apart from one thing, his uh, how do I say it? His pants literally like start from this point below the chest, going downwards. Like that's the part I didn't get, but I get it's okay. I don't know why it's like that, but basically maybe it's because of the weapons he has underneath his big coat so this guy is a is a member of the red dragon the red dragon is led by a, no, a guy known as dagon which you know that story can actually be further explained in mk Armageddon. but this guy hmm, was a skilled member of the red dragon and was i think the top warrior of the red dragon i guess but in the last century, many of the reckless members became dissatisfied with the restraints of the code of the Red Dragon placed on them and broke to form their own gang. Now, I think that ties to Keno. I think Keno took some people with him and formed the Black Dragon, so something like that. Since then, it has been the Red Dragon's number one priority to completely eradicate the infidels known collectively as the Black Dragon. Basically, this guy is the coolest guy ever. He's a, he's a top warrior in the Red Dragon. His main purpose given to him is destroying the remnants of the former. No, destroying the remnants of the the guys who broke free from the Red Dragon, the Black Dragon. So, I think this guy can literally take them all on. Like, look at that face. You know, maybe I'm just a fan of him, probably. Again, Kitana, but alternate costume. This is the primary costume. I think it looks close to how original in the first Mortal Kombat. You know, it looks cool. And the mask looks kinda cool too. Her hair actually drops down to her back, something like that. So, having freed a home world from the... Oh, having freed a Denia from Shao Kahn's grasp. Kitana led her people to battle against the weakened emperor in a preemptive strike. So, this woman, huh? this proud, beautiful woman allied with the Shokan armies of Outworld. The Shokans are like Prince Goro, you know. So, she allied with the Shokan armies led by Prince Goro, and together the two nations are on the brink of victory. But the problem was, Goro was actually destroyed in battle, and the Shokan army spiraled into leaderless chaos. I'm sure Havik would like that. <laughs> but in a strange turn of events, Shao Kahn was slain by an unknown assailants as and Keno's troops began a hasty retreat. Kitana had won but at a, at a terrible cost to the Shokan people. Yo, so the Shokans are these strong uh, four-armed creatures. Should I call them creatures? Okay. That exist in Outworld, you know. You know, many people know Goro, so Goro is literally a Shokan, but he was actually destroyed in battle as we have been told. Yep. I like a primary costume too. Lime. God damn. During the construction of Shang Tsung's palace, Lime discovered that it will be constructed around the ancient stone structure located on a nearby plateau. Her people have regarded the relic as sacred as sacred for as long as anyone will remember. Legends told it that it was a portal to the heavens left behind by the gods themselves. When Quan Chi activated the portal with the mysterious amulet and countless souls spewed forth trapped between the realms, it was clear that the legends had been true. Okay, I don't know what, was, what that was about. Was it a Kamidogu that was located on the nearby plateau? Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. 
I think I think so. I'm not sure what to talk about this version, but you know, but uh, Lemay's costume is a bit revealing here, man. You know, I like it for being skimpy, but you know, I prefer the previous costume. So, congratulations, you have unlocked Lemay's attire costume. Marikato gozaimasu. So this costume is a bit. Yeah, I like it. Reptilian peace sinister. <laughs> Yo. Okay. Okay. Reptile and and okay, reptile is one of the characters that has undergone numerous changes in the in the entirety of the Mortal Kombat games, you know. At one point he's a human a uh, palace swap ninja, a green ninja. At another point, uh, he's a full lizard man, like as you can see here. So, <laughs> okay, reptiles detour to Kitana's base camp, but delayed him just long enough for Shang Tsung and Quan Chi to spring the attack on Shao Kahn. Reptile was devastated that he had failed to master his master Shao Kahn and wandered into outworld into the outward wastelands aimlessly until he once again crossed paths with Nitara. Okay, at that point where he was wandering around the wastelands aimless, aimlessly, you can actually see him do so while playing as Shujinko in his conquest mode in MK Deception. Yep. Desperately in need of a master, he offered his loyalty to Nitara since uh, their paths crossed, something like that. A first command to him was to attack, to attack the invader from Earthrealm, who was Cyrax. She explained that he must first destroy his arm panel in order to weaken the outsider. Now, if you connect it to Cyrax's story and Nitara's story, you can see that Nitara is actually a b <laughs> Okay, I was too harsh. Nitara basically ordered Reptile to beat up Cyrax to the point that Cyrax was struck or stuck in Outworld so as to be able to use both Cyrax and Reptile as her own pawns. A pawn literally like a chess piece, you know. So, yeah, N Nitara is a bad guy. So. <laughs> All for the sake of her people, I guess. Reptile is also a part of a clan known as, as the Zaterans, if I'm not wrong. Uh, the Zaterans are actually a reptile kind of people like you can see him here and uh, he's the only one who can shape shift okay in this universe i'm not sure if he's the only one who can shape shift but i guess that that is so in the new mk timeline mk1 the current mk1 is actually still the only one the only zatera who can uh, shape shift but the only problem with that ability is that he was shunned among his own people. So, you know, it was kind of uh, a weird stuff that stigmatized him, something like that. But in the new MK, it's actually revealed that a couple of Zaterans were actually born with this ability. But due to some sort of fear, they were actually destroyed while they were young. Uh, so Reptile was kind of lucky in that timeline. So, and again, since this is the original universe, he was originally like uh, the green ninja. So the, the, okay, the reason he looks more reptilian now is because of the, how is he called? The resurgence of Onaga the Dragon King. You know, they were kind of trying to link the resurrection of the Dragon King to reptiles' uh, transformation from being like more humanish to more reptilish, something like that. So that's Reptile's alternate costume. Cage. So this is his normal costume. And by this time he didn't have the tattoo here. But I liked... <laughs> I don't know why. He has like a, <laughs> like a lion doorbell uh, belt. You can imagine Sonya going to the lion doorbell. Like, <laughs> I should stop, I should stop. So... Gage, this is like his revamped uh, primary costume, so it's a bit of a spin-off version 
a little bit of a variation version from his Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monk's uh, costume, I guess. So, Johnny Cage had been fed up with the lame writing of his current movie Mortal Kombat, The Death of Johnny Cage, in which his character repeatedly died and was resurrected. To him, his real life adventures were much more sensational. Sensational. He kicked butt, huh? But his studio felt that the hero needed to take a fall for dramatic purposes. Johnny Cage reluctantly agreed to continue with the project until the Thunder God Raiden called him away to a new adventure in Outworld. To him it's an adventure, to Raiden it's a, a huge deal to protect Earthrealm, you know. But uh, something that I've thought of right now, I think... Uh, hmm, that point, but his studio felt that the hero needed to take a fall for dramatic purposes. Okay, forget Mortal Kombat, uh, the death of the jo Johnny Cage movie. In this game, as it starts, the Deadly Alliance actually defeat Liu Kang and uh, kill him. You know, that gives an opening to new characters that can come and take the mantle of being the new main character. So, I think that was what m the Mortal Kombat makers were actually going for in reality now, in our world now. <laughs> I think they were trying to make that, you know, they were trying to link that to this. So this is basically the real life reason why probably Liu Kang was defeated. So as to make sure Jinko the new main character in MK Deception. And fun fact is that Shujinko actually means main character in Japanese, I think. So that's Johnny Cage and his movies. Huh? So the alternate costume of Shang Tsung looks like a, a matador from Spain. I don't know. Those guys, those bullfighters. Probably, I don't know. Maybe it was actually inspired by that kind. That kind of costume, I guess. Okay, on the lower parts at least, from his waist down, but I don't know from the waist up. Maybe they mixed the matter of costume idea with with, uh, with his character, personality, uh, costume ideas, something like that. Okay, Quan Chi proposed an alliance with Shang Tsung that will prove to be mutually beneficial, you know. He offered Shang Tsung, uh, okay, Quan Quan, Quan Chi. <laughs> I like calling Quan Chi Quan Quan. So Quan Quan offered Shang Tsung immortality by unlocking the portals linked to the heavens, while Shang Tsung in return will therefore have an access to unlimited number of souls to preserve his youth. Okay, basically, due to Shang Tsung unlocking the portal, no, no, due to Quan Chi unlocking the portal, Shang Tsung will have access to a limited number of souls to preserve his youth and his powers. In return, he will help Quan Chi uh, in transplanting the warrior souls into the mummified uh, remains of the Dragon King's undefeatable stone army. So, this is basically like the current Mortal Kombat 1, where the Deadly Alliance reformed and they were trying to re re revamp or revive the stone dragon king's army something like that so shang Tsung accepted the offer and the deadly alliance was formed <laughs> so shang Tsung formed during this period and during the new mortal kombat timeline yep yeah, this is actually fun so this guy is called su hao he actually has a deadly moveset, so despite his looks, uh, okay, this guy actually, I think he didn't have a heart, so he was given a cybernetic heart by the red dragon. This guy was actually, uh, how is he called? He was actually scouted by Mavado, you know, you know, since the red dragon uh, needed more stuff because some of their people left them to form the black dragon, uh, Mavado recruited this guy, Suhao into the red dragon. <laughs> I guess that's how I can think of it before reading his origins. And also, to back up my claim, uh, in Mortal Kombat Deception, when playing as Shujinko, you, you are <laughs> when you use Shujinko, you actually help Mavado in recruiting Suhao. Like, Mavado asks you, when you're in Edenia, the realm of Edenia, you find Mavado in some alley, and he actually asks you to help him 
to recruit someone. I think so. And later on when you meet Suhao, Suhao is looking for a job. Now, <laughs> you are the one who actually links them. And they actually go happily ever after to serve Dagon and the Red Dragon. I guess. So, a member of the Red Dragon, Suhao's duty was to, it was to infiltrate the special forces and covertly guide them to the members of the Black Dragon. So, this guy, his first assignment was, I think, that, you know, uh, infiltrating the special forces and guiding them to members of the Black Dragon. So, he's, he's maintaining the, the main aim of the Red Dragon, but by pretending to be a member of the special forces. But once the Black Dragon was seemingly destroyed, Suhao was ordered to remain among the special forces ranks as an informant until further notice. So, this guy proves to be more useful as he's now a plant in <laughs> the special forces. That notice came when uh, his superior Mavado ordered him to destroy the Outworld Investigation Agency's ability to travel to Outworld. So, so how will not dishonor the, his Red Dragon clan? Come on, they saved him from a life of... Uh, uh, how is he called? A weird life, so... So he will make sure to complete that task. So this story actually also links to Sonya Blades. He destroys the weird portal thingy. <laughs> uh, you know. So that's how. Uh, if I'm not wrong, I think that's how Kenshi was lost. And uh, Cyrax, no. Probably I don't know. He basically thwarted the means of the of the special forces to move from Earth Realm to Outworld, something like that. So that's how the the red cyborg thing on his chest is his new cybernetic heart. I don't know why it's connected to the arm. Maybe it's to support it. And basically, this guy, okay, he's a bit of a, on an oddball a bit due to the helmet now, the weird military like cap. Okay, I don't know how, how to put in his design into words, but he's, he's a bit cool, I think. Not so much, though. Now you can see Borecho's tummy aching to fat and consume lots of liquor. Okay, sorry, Borecho. Borecho had been unable to compete against Shang Tsung in the Mortal Kombat tournament on Earth. You know, his outward birthplace guaranteed that his victory would have been in the name of Shao Kahn. So, get the point. So, if he was an Earth realm, he was from, if he was from Earth, he would have no problems to fight Shang Tsung. But because he was not from Earth, he cannot fight Shang. You know, because if he ended up beating Shang, it would be for the honor of Earthworld. And at that point in time, Outworld was in control of Shao Kahn. So, that was like helping Shao Kahn to merge the Outworld and the other realms, you know. But the conflict this time was not a tournament to prevent an evil emperor from consuming another realm. Oh, this time the battle was to save his own realm from the tyranny of the two evil sorcerers. Nothing could hold him back from challenge. the challenge that lay before him. The wrath of Boraicho would be unleashed once again. I think uh, he became mad that the deadly alliance picked on Liu Kang, probably, I think. But other than that, his design looks a bit... Mm. He looks like a... Okay, not his skin, but his, uh, his top, you know, from the waist upwards, it looks like some sort of a... Is it a monster clothing? Like in these weird anime games, like, most of the time you'll find, like, a hobgoblin is the one donning those spike stuff. And the big red coats, something like that. But his design is a, it's basically Boraicho, who's a serious, who's a serious Boraicho, something like that. <laughs> Yo, I'm not fit to talking about costumes. What the hell? Blaze. Now, before you even read about anything, you can see these guys, the powers of the elemental fire. You know. If I ever want to be a superhero, I'd like fire powers. So I'll probably steal some from these, you know, after making a deal with Damashi. <laughs> so <laughs> enough about that. Blaze is an elemental fire deity. Was made for weird reasons. Like 
His origin is more fleshed out in the MK Armageddon uh, game. You know? So, the mysterious outworld elemental known as only as Blaze had been long on a quest throughout the realm. During his quest, he was ambushed on a bridge by an ancient sect of holy men, still serving the long dead dragon king. So, <laughs> so the holy men enslaved him through mystic incantations and forced him to protect the last known great dragon egg. For many years, he had remained submerged beneath the molten rock of the incubation chambers as the guardian of the egg. Okay. In MK Deception, you actually find him roaming around in Outworld. And uh, this, he actually tells you a bit of this thing, like he's guarding the egg and something like that. But those holy men who actually ambushed him, I think were the ones who actually approached you, you know, as Shujinko in MK Deception Conquest. They approached you to help you find a vampire so that, so that they may be able to impel, you know, her with a wooden stick, you know, all for the purpose of maintaining holiness in the land. So, you actually helped them find Nitara, but I think they were actually destroyed by Nitara. Blaze actually was guarding the, the dragon egg, and uh, yeah, that's, that was basically his purpose, but in reality, he had actually forgotten his main purpose, which was actually revealed in Armageddon. So, his design is basically a reddish human, who has powers, who has fire powers. He's basically like blazing. <laughs> it's, a, it's like a person blazing in his glory in battle or something like that okay the next guy is kenshi this is the coolest uh the coolest uh sword uh, sword swinging samurai i don't know <laughs> the first thing you notice this guy is basically like ryu but the headband is on the eyes so that's because he's he's blind so okay he's he's blind but he's not blind so Okay, let's just read first. So, sensing the cries of his captured ancestors, Kenshi made a vow to slay Shang Tsung in order to free them from his grasp. When he learned of Shang Tsung's escape to Outworld, Kenshi agreed to help the special forces search for the missing agent Cyrax as a means of gaining access to that realm, which allowed him to act as both rescue party and spy. So, you know, the story attaches itself to Cyrax's story and I think Sonya's story. Uh, shortly after discovering the sorcerer's whereabouts, the agency was destroyed and with it his only means of for return to Earth. Kenshin now finds himself facing the deadly alliance on his own. <laughs> the reason of be him being stranded is because of Suhao, <laughs> the red dragon number two, you know. So, they might actually explain his powers. So, this guy wields a sword, uh, uh, I'm forgetting the name. It has a specific name. Okay, both the sword and his clan. So, is it the Tara clan? Let's assume it's the Tara clan. <laughs> if I'm wrong, please tell me in the comments. <laughs> so, this guy... Okay, before he became blind, he was actually a proud, strong warrior, you know. Like Haomaru from uh, Samurai Showdown. Or Ryu from Street Fighter. So, this guy was challenging many sword... Uh, how are they called? Swordsman, <laughs> he was challenging many swordsmen to so as to be able to see how far he is, you know, how far he is as a swordsman. But he, okay, in his travels, he faced Shang Tsung, and Shang actually knew who this guy was and what his sword was, you know, because Shang like, because Shang Tsung likes swords, so no, likes souls. So Kenshi's sword is actually a. Uh, it contains the souls of his ancestors. So he foolishly challenged uh, Shang Sun, but Shang was able to beat him. Not only beat him, but suck the souls out of uh, the sword, I think. He, he, okay. Shang actually absorbed a huge number of souls from the sword, but I didn't think I don't think he took all of the souls. So that shock actually made Kenshi lose his eyesight. I think so. I don't know how it actually can be explained scientifically, but just think of it as some sort of spiritual stuff, you know, some weird phenomena. So, basically this guy became blind because of the lack of the many souls that were, that were, you know, basically stolen from him by Shang. So, Shang left him for dead, and this guy was able to master his, uh, his more deadly techniques using the 
sword's powers so the sword gave him his sight back in some sort i think he has some sort of telekinetic powers which were granted by him by the sword and so even him is even if he seems weaker he's actually stronger so in the new timeline he's actually blinded by melina if you watch uh, the mk1 it was actually a bit brutal she used the twin size to gouge out kenshi's eyes so ah. and basically the sword granted him powers later on yep some chapters later on so another thing about kenshi just to speed things up since he's a member of the special forces he remained you know he he was still with them up to mkx i think he didn't show up in MK11, but in MKX he was still part of them. And he had a son known as Takeda. Yo, that guy is the... I think he's the coolest combat kid in MKX. The combat kids are Kasti Cage, Takeda, Kang Jin, who's Kung Lao's nephew, and uh, Jackie Briggs, who's Jack's uh, daughter. So, Kenshi has, had actually entrusted his son Takeda to... Hanzo Hasashi Scorpion so, so that Scorpion can be able to train him well well enough so as to be able you know to stand on his own as a warrior and later on at the end of the story he came to pick Takeda up so as to be able to teach him more you know to teach him his ways now I think so Takeda will, will have both the strengths of the Shirarayu clan and the Tara clan I think <laughs> something like that so that's a bit about Kenshi we are back to Suhao, and now he doesn't have his hat, and he has like some sort of a baraka belt. Suhao gained access to an iron pulse bomb and infiltrated the heavenly reinforced underground bunker that housed the techno portals designed by the agency. Barely evading Jax, Suhao activated the portal to Outworld, switched on the bomb and accept, escaped into the portal before the iron pulse went off. The agency was destroyed, and with it, any means of interrealm travel from Earthrealm. So how now must make contact with Mavado in Outworld to receive his next objective or to receive his next prize, you know, since the Red Dragon do not just use you like that. I think, I think so, probably. So this portion of the paragraph actually explains and justifies uh, and proves that it was, it was actually Suha who actually destroyed the agency's uh, portal. So... As I said, I like this costume as compared to his other one, but this is his alternate costume. So how he uses wrestling tactics, so yeah. Next is the Swordsman Mavado costume. Look at this guy, looks like he's straight from Soul Calibur. I haven't played Soul Calibur that much, I've only played Soul Calibur Broken Destiny, the PSP version. Uh, I think it was actually only on the PSP, so... <laughs> it was thought that the Black Dragon had completely destroyed had been completely destroyed until Mavado was approached by two sorcerers, you know, the Deadly Alliance. The sorcerers offered to hand over the last member of the Black Dragon, Keno, in return for Mavado's assistance in eliminating a spy <laughs> in Outworld. So, so, Keno thought that he was actually the one who was going to double cross, you know, the Deadly Alliance at some point, but the Deadly Alliance were considering you know, to double cross Keno before he did so on them, something like that. So Mavado accepted the offer and traveled to Outworld with Quan Chi and Shang Soon by the way of a secret interrealm portal located in the Lost Sea. A swordsman who had been spying on Shang Soon for the past few months will soon be eliminated. <sighs> that's Kenshi. The swordsman who had been spying on Shang Soon, that's Kenshi. So it's time with Kenshi's story. Seriously, look at this guy. This guy is the coolest looking guy I've ever seen. Probably. You know, they could bring him back in MK1. I don't know. I usually like that attack of him where he usually springs on you with with his uh, double hook rubbery stuff. I don't know. Jox Briggs, the man with the metal arms. Look at this guy. He's another cool dude. With a big... Uh, with a big macho man glasses. Uh, if you if you haven't been able to tell yet, this guy is from the army. He's actually a member of the agency like Sonya Blade. Uh, he, okay, according to this paragraph, he spent most of his time 
in the heavily heavily modified fortified underground facilities of the actual investigation agency from an enormous underground chamber Jax will send his agents to another realm by the way of man-made inter-realm portals two of his agents uh, Cyrax and Kenshi had been assigned to the realm of Outworld, a domain of strange creatures and maniacal sorcerers. Uh, <laughs> Jax will soon be reminded of just how dangerous a threat to Earth that realm could be. So, yeah, this guy, I think he was probably manning the portals. <laughs> I think. And uh, you might be asking yourself if, if you are not a fan of MK uh, or if this is your first exposure to MK. The reason this guy has metal arms is because of uh, uh, his arms were ripped off by. Uh, okay, in the original Mortal Kombat, I think his arms were ripped off by Goro. In the Mortal Kombat animation, uh, which, was, which was released in, I don't know, a couple of years ago, maybe like 2021, it was actually Shang Tsung who did the thing, you know. He ripped his arms as a sort of a fatality so later on his arms will be replaced in the mortal kombat movie that came out recently i think again in 2021 it was sub-zero who shattered his arms yo this guy his arms are usually like in danger anytime you see him with normal arms like literally sub-zero he fought sub-zero but sub-zero was way stronger than him he just grabbed both of his arms after deflecting his punches and uh, froze them to this point on the shoulders and just shattered them. So, ah. so <laughs> in the new timeline, we haven't seen Jax yet. So, but we saw a variation of him in the ending before Lord uh, before Lord Havik emerged. His arms are actually like already taken out if i'm not wrong and he was barely surviving until lord havoc brought demise on him something like that but this guy is basically a cool dude he's huge the only bad thing is his arms always being ripped off all the time <laughs> Fish. oh sonya this is actually a better costume i think uh, they usually uh, they hit the balloons a bit which makes it more realistic i think <laughs> the hell I, th I like this one this this costume might actually be one of the best in this game so so Sonya was instructed to accompany Jax to an island in the lost sea where the thunder god Raiden would meet with them so Raiden gathering the earth warrior troops who are going to defend earth realm from outworld so the island had once again been the location of a first mortal combat tournament a decade ago oh so it was 10 years ago Ah, I didn't. Okay, that I didn't know. Now it was an abandoned. An ad, ah, okay, now it was an abandoned reminder of the struggle between Earth and the forces of evil. As she and the other heroes waited for Raiden to appear, she came to a realization that this time she had no plan of attack. <laughs> All Sonya knew for sure was that somehow she had to rescue her fellow agents, Kenshi and Soyrox. As a special forces training detected, no man should be left behind. No man or woman should be left behind. Ah, so it's basically just an extension of our original story. Quan Quan's normal costume. Yo, I kind of prefers Quan. I kind of prefer Quan Chi's original costume now. <laughs> He's trying in the nether realm, Quan Chi was persistently tormented by the ninja spectre Scorpion. Here comes Scorpion wanting to exact enact revenge on Quan Chi, huh? but the assistance of from Moloch and Drachmin, Quan Chi discovered the truth behind the truth about the amulet he had stolen from the fallen elder god Shinnok in MK4. An ancient runestone bearing the likeness of his amulet revealed new information that would enable Quan Chi to traverse the realms through a network of ancient gateways. You know, those weird fiery like portals. Yeah. Narrowly evading Scorpion's wrath, he escaped the nether realm through one of these gateways and emerged in an ancient tomb in Outworld. So hmm. <laughs> You've heard of Drachmin and Moloch. The tag the weird tag team that helped Quan Chi. 
only to be abandoned but <laughs> Drahmin and Moloch were actually from Netherrealm and they were actually sticking away out of it you know since Netherrealm is like this sort of hell where people anguish where people who end up there or the creatures that live there anguish in pain like you can see Drahmin's skin you know this guy literally was in pain that probably had to cut off one of his arms in exchange for a miss or maybe his arm got stuck inside the miss I'm not sure so Drachmin Drachmin what the hell Drachmin held uh, had led Quan Chi to a structure that housed the remnants of an ancient tablets and rune stones dating back to the creation of the realms so he helped Quan Chi find that weird place the remnants of the ancient tablets blah 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 Quan Chi's eye was caught by a tablet with an image that bore a striking resemblance to his amulet so the engraved writing revealed the amulet's hidden power to control interrealm portals. So, Quan Chi broke his promise, betrayed both Moloch and Rahmin and escaped using the amulet. So, <laughs> Rahmin and Mo- Moloch were left behind. But, here's the the kicker. Unknown to Quan Chi, however, the two Oni also escaped and are now thirsty for revenge. Now, <laughs> so Rahmin and Moloch actually escaped. And this is actually proven by in a weird place in a... okay again as you play as Shujinko in okay I'll, I'll reference a lot of this stuff to Shujinko's conquest in Deception. I'm not sure if it's in Earthrealm or in Outworld. Uh, this actually <laughs> this actually when you talk to the locals in that little village, you can actually hear that some. It's dangerous for humans to wander into or it's dangerous for the natives to wander into a certain forest because you know very few have come out of there because that they they actually they are suspicious that there are man-eating beasts there. The man-eating beasts are actually Moloch and Drachmin. So <laughs> So that's actually that actually proves that the that Drachmin and Moloch actually escaped. So, yeah, Drachmin looks like he's seen better days. So I don't know if I like this costume. This is this is his alternate costume, and I'm, and I'm not even sure if I like the primary one. Some of these characters are used to depict like suffering or like they're in a bad state. So their design is actually like depicting that. So let's go next. Yo, we still have some to discuss. Kung Lao! Without the heart. Don't be confused, he still has his heart, his bloody heart on the on his back in this costume. So Kung Lao was the first to find the body of his friend and fellow Shaolin monk Liu Kang. After he was defeated by the deadly alliance, he discovered that it was in fact Shang Sun who had dealt the fatal blow. You know this the neck snapping you knock. So enraged Kung Lao abandoned his Shaolin beliefs and vowed to revenge against the sorcerer. Mm. So this is the cliche revenge story. You defeated my friend, I'm going to beat you ten times. Uh, tenfold? Uh, he knew that his fighting skill would not be sufficient to beat Shang Tsung. So he needed training from the same outworld master who had taught Lu Kang that one special attack he needed to win the Mortal Kombat tournament so many years ago. So basically, this guy abandoned his Shaolin beliefs, went to Shu, not Shujinko, went to Boraicho to seek training, so as to be able to be taught that one fatal move that he can use to defeat Shang Tsung. So I don't know why they are talking about one fatal moves. <laughs> they should have just said a myriads of mystical arts that he could use. But I guess it's just some sort of dramatization. But this was a this was a weird version of Kung Lao at that time. Many people are used to seeing Kung Lao with his heart and his uh, his more striking uh, warrior garments, something like that. Also, another another fun fact. Uh, no, I'll talk about that fun fact in Kung Lao's original costume. Yep. So Nitara's first costume which actually looks way better. Mm. 
I should stop ogling her. The vampire Nitara had at long last discovered the location of the orb that had bound her realm to Outworld. Unfortunately, it rested in a location she could never access. However, the ninja cyborg Cyrax of Earthrealm had the ability to retrieve it for her. Through careful manipulation, she yeah, through careful manipulation, uh, she convinced Reptile to engage Cyrax in combat and destroyed his arm panel in the process. Remember the, uh, the arm panel of Cyrax actually was the way he could transport himself back to Earth. So her plan was coming together beautifully. Now we have to combine this story with the with the alternate costume story. So you know, basically as these two henchmen now, after manipulating them, be careful of manipulating female vampires. You know, they might come for you, seeking of you, seeking your healthy blood, <laughs> or other services that they might want from you. Like looking for weird lost orbs in the earth, you know, as they claim to want to free their world. Be careful when you see something or someone like her, just run away, huh? Run. <laughs> I should stop. But her costume looks way like a. Yep, um, I have no words exactly. I prefer this costume to the previous one. At least she doesn't have white paint on her face. You know, at least her face looks like a... She's a bit beautiful, I guess. I should stop it. That was off. <sighs> Yo. Mm. Frosty! Frost eyes looks like she wants to gouge, her, gouge your heart from your chest, something like that. But this costume looks... Okay. It's like the previous costume, the first costume is like the, you know, the working costume, the ninja costume. This is like the costume she wears when she's probably relaxing. Or maybe like when she's just wandering aimlessly. Or when she's going for dates with other Link Wei members, I don't know. Or maybe when she goes to find other parties that may want to beat Sub-Zero on her behalf. Maybe this is what she wears, huh? At the request of Thunder God Raiden, Sub-Zero journeyed to Outworld to help defeat the Jedi Alliance. Oh, don't forget, the Link Way is based on Earth. I think they are based, they are, they are inspired from Chinese, I think. I'm not sure. The Link Way name sounds Chinese. Frost accompanied him to aid her new mentor to gain more experience as a warrior. By participating in real world battles, Sub Zero had hoped that Frost would gain perspective and enlightenment. But no, 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 Frost had other reasons for following him into Outworld. This basically like Adam and Eve situation. Uh, the only difference is that assume Adam is like, you know, Eve's teacher. So Eve wants to get some sort of apple, but Adam wants Eve to, you know. <laughs> to be more enlightened and not to be tempted by anything. I don't know if that made sense. Frost was merely waiting for the right moment to reveal her true intentions. Huh? She wanted to betray Sub-Zero. But other than that, uh, she looks she looks cool in this costume. Again, watch the boys and avoid cold women. Look at this guy. <sighs> But before that, let's just talk about Drachmin first. <laughs> okay, this is the initial Drachmin costume. Uh, yeah, I prefer this costume as compared to the alternate one. That mask looks good. And another fun fact is that Drachmin usually stinks. You can see the flies that surround him. Like literally when you play the game as Drachmin, or when you meet him somewhere in the conquest or something like that, Usually has like flies hovering around him, so that shows you that the Nether Realm is a really weird, dark, stinky place. Stinky to some extent, I don't know. The only tormentor Drachmin had resided in the fifth plane of the Nether Realm for centuries. It was therefore no surprise to Moloch that Drachmin would so readily accept Quan Chi's offer for freedom. That that realm in it, in return <clears throat> Offer Drachmin freedom from that realm in return for protection from the ninja spectre Scorpion. Drachmin and Moloch savagely brutalized Scorpion <laughs> whenever he made a move for Quan Chi. 
It will not be long before they will be released upon the world of the living and taste mortal flesh once more. Yep, I think they were hiding in Earth Realm somewhere. But I like this costume more. Now, those guys that, that were being hunted by Drachmin, I guess the first thing they noticed were the weird increase in the amounts of house flies or never Realm flies. So that's the first, uh, what are they called? The first sign of doom. So when you see some houseflies run away, Drachmin is on your back with a huge maze on his right hand ready to hit your back or hit the back of your head, being knocked out cold and you end up being his supper. So that was the prequel to his alternate costume paragraph. <laughs> okay. Hmm. This is Scorpion's alternate costume and this is his default costume. So. Just to give you an example of how the order you have to go for these stories, you have to go for the first costume first and the second later, you know, to complete the story. So, this is Scorpion, huh? The Shirarayu uh, ninja. But this time he seems more like a samurai due to the twin swords, twin katana, katanas on his back. And the term Shirarayu actually seems more Japanese. His name is Hanzo Asashi, which is Japanese, so he's a Japanese anime protagonist. Okay, this Scorpion, basically this guy, <sighs> how do I say this? His mortal enemy is Sub-Zero, Bihan Sub-Zero, not quite young, Bihan. So, so this is actually what happened. This guy's family was massacred by... Sub Zero and his members, the Lin Kuei. The whole clan was literally like wiped off. I think it was only a few survivors, or maybe it was he alone who survived. So, bearing that hatred, he became Scorpion. Like, he was just Hanzo Asashi, but now he has the Scorpion like powers, which were granted to him by Quan Chi. Little did he know that Quan Chi was actually the mastermind of this plan. It wasn't actually Bihan Sub Zero. And the link who actually attacked his uh, clan it was actually Quan Chi's forces disguised as the Lin Kuei who attacked his clan. So Hanzo Asashi as Scorpion was literally like now chasing revenge after Bihan. And later on he found him and he literally like destroyed him. So it caused uh, like a domino effect. Now, the new Scorpion, Kwai Liang, who is Bihan's younger brother, now seeks revenge against Scorpion, I think, so as to be able to avenge his brother. But, uh, <laughs> how do I say it? Bihan was destroyed, the first Sub Zero, and he ended up serving Quan Chi as noob cybot. After Scorpion destroyed Bihan, he found out the real thing that had happened, so. He now seeks revenge against Quan Chi. Now the ninja spectre Scorpion had assumed for many years that Sub-Zero had killed his family and clan, only to later discover that the true murderer was the sorcerer Quan Chi. Now, that was what I explained. After revealing his treachery, Quan Chi then attempted to send Scorpion to the fifth plane of the Netherrealm. Thinking quickly, Scorpion grabbed the, grappled the sorcerer at the last moment. Get over here! <laughs> And they were tr both transported to the Forbidden Realm. The turn of events boded well for Scorpion as his strength increased the longer he remained there. He was more deadly in the Nether Realm. His powers were literally fueled by the flames of hatred. Quan Chi's powers, however, proved to be useless against him. So, second part, Kansina is more rager, but she seems like he's more of a servant due to the shackles, you know. He's shackled by his own hatred. And I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to be poetic, but I don't know if it's correct. <laughs> he has chains, and he's actually revealed the weird flamey skull. You know, he's, this Ghost Rider Scorpion, so his, his uh, flamey fatality is him taking off his mask and spewing hot fire on you. You know, just like the way Reptile takes off his mask and spews off his poison against you. So, Scorpion hunted Quan Chi relentlessly through the Nether Realm. Just like we've been told in the other stories that are linked to this. 
thrashing him every chance he could. Eventually, Quan Chi enlisted the help of Drachmin and Moloch, who protected him from the onslaught from Scorpion. So Quan Chi finally discovered a way out of Netherrealm through a strange portal. Scorpion rushed to follow him. He emerged in Outworld, but in a different location, far from Quan Chi, far from his play. Pray, <laughs> good lord. He can still sense Quan Chi's presence and will hunt him wherever he runs to. There is nowhere the sorcerer can hide. So, ah. Uh, <laughs> Later on, he made peace with Kuai Liang, the second Sub-Zero, the younger brother to Bihan, and actually revealed what had happened. And just to uh, summarize everything, the rivalry between Scorpion and Sub-Zero was, you know, they buried the hatchet between themselves and they started to fight together as one. In the new MK timeline, uh, Scorpion is not actually Hanzo Asashi, uh, it's Kuai Liang. Kuai Liang, who is a member of the Ling Kuei clan. His older brother, the Grand Master, is Bihan, who is Sub-Zero. Later on, due to their moralities being different, both went on their separate paths. Uh, and uh, Sub-Zero being evil, Bihan, Sub-Zero, and Kuai Liang, Scorpion, being the good guy. And uh, Scorpion is fighting for the, the human race or something like that. In I don't know if it's Smoke's ending or what, Takeda now becomes Takeda is Kenshi's son who was trained by Scorpion. In the new timeline, Takeda is actually Hanzo Asashi in Kuei Liang's ending, or is it Smoke's ending? One of those two. So there's a little bit of changes in the new timeline. But originally, Scorpion was this huge chunk of a man who was ready to enact vengeance upon anyone. So next is. Uh... No, 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 no. Again. Let's go to the original costume Sub-Zero. Now, the future of the Lin Kuei hung in the balance as Sub-Zero and the Ninja Cyborg Sector battle for the control of the Dragon Medallion. Okay, just for easy understanding, Sector is literally an evil version of Cyrax, like uh, Cyberized himself. Cyrax is yellow and black in color, Sector is red, white and black in color, so the Cyborg form. Each of the Lin Kuei members seem to have a staple color for themselves. Sub-Zero is blue, Smoke is grey, Sector is red, Cyrax is yellow, like, you know, they are different, different. So, Sector and Sub-Zero are battling for the control of the Dragon Medallion, which you can see in this Sub-Zero's chest. Sub-Zero defeated Sector and then claimed the title of the Grand Master. With his freezing powers enhanced by the Medallion, he vowed to reform the Lin Kuei as a force of good. Sub-Zero Kuai Liang is different from his brother Bihan in, in a sense that Kuai Liang is more like more of a good person with good morals as compared to his brash and aggressive brother Bihan. So Sub-Zero relocated the clan to a remote location in the frozen Arctic where he had discovered an ancient temple frozen into the side of a glacier. So which you can actually see in the conquest mode in now MK Armageddon, not deception, Armageddon. You actually end up in this fortress as you use Dagon in the conquest. There the new Link Kuei could hone their skills without interruption, you know, classes in session. Hmm. Regarding Sub-Zero's costume, you can see his arms are a bit frozen, you know, signifying he has like ice powers. I like this costume. Yo, I don't know, I like like many stuff. <laughs> Maybe it's cause I grew up as a fan of these franchises, I don't know. I'm not that critical, <laughs> I'm not a, a designer, but nothing. Basically, I like this costume, it's one of my best Sub-Zero costume that I like. But Shredder Sub-Zero is cooler in Deception. So, yep. So let's go to the next one, which highly confused me a bit. Hmm. Before saying anything, you can see this version of Sub-Zero. Okay, Sub-Zero usually has like a scar on his right eye. In this version, I'm not sure who gave him the scar, but in the new timeline, uh, Kuai Liang as Scorpion, this scar was given to him by Bihan, Sub-Zero. So, that's the new timeline. Okay, let's go back to this. Uh, he has like 
uh, I don't know how to call it, but this armor is a bit different and more. It looks more comfortable to move in. I'm not sure. It doesn't seem as tight as the first one. But in terms of looks, I prefer the first one. And another thing, he seems more of like an American than an Asian, probably. I think so. Maybe it was the the way they, they tried to make him too serious that he ended up being... The face ended up being uh, different. I don't know. Or maybe they wanted him to resemble a previous version of Sub-Zero. In MK, they usually used like di digitized humans, uh, human sprites, so... The Sub-Zero in Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 was more of this kind of person. So I think they wanted him to resemble that version. So Raiden appeared before Sub-Zero and asked for his aid in defeating the Deadly Alliance in Outworld. He fought alongside Raven. So that the link to show the link to show the world that the Link Wei have changed, you know, they have mended their ways. They are not brutal killers anymore. Sub-Zero accepted the challenge and brought with him one of his newest recruits, Frost. The frosty lady, yeah? it was highly unusual for the Grandmaster to embark on such a dangerous mission. But Sub Zero felt it was necessary to earn the respect of his fellow Lin Kuei, you know, as the new Grandmaster. So, these guys are, these guys are chill, dude, you know, no pun intended. So, <laughs> yeah, I like Sub Zero. So, who else have we left? Okay, now we won't go to the normal one, huh? the normal. Let's go to Kenshi. And in this version, he looks more like Ryu from Street Fighter. Okay, a combination of Ryu and some sort of samurai -ish garments. You can see he doesn't have his blindfold. But, okay. Mm, this design, it's cool, but it's not as cool as his first choice design. When I look at him now, I think of Ryu. I don't know why. So years ago, the rogue swordsman Kenshi wandered Japan to challenge the greatest warriors. Oh, this is a prequel. So this is how he looked like before donning the red headband. So his purpose in life was simply to be the best. Shang Soon, however, discovered Kenshi's true heritage as a descendant of the long forgotten line of warrior kings. They didn't give the the name. So the name of the clan. Isasara decided decided to consume the souls of those warrior kings and tricked the annoying Kenshi into releasing them from their tomb. Oh! Mm, it was a tomb, not a sword. <laughs> I think I was a bit off in the previous explanation. So, this act was so huge to Kenshi that it left him blinded. So, I was correct there. So, Shang Tsung consumed the souls and left Kenshi to die in the tomb. So this is Kenshi's uh, previous state, you know, he seemed like a focused warrior before later on becoming the cool looking uh, samurai with the red headband on covering his eyes or something like that. Okay, let's go back to Keno. Keno had been defeated in the battle with the special forces agent Sonya Blade during Shao Kahn's invasion of Earth realm. Shao Kahn incarcerated Keno for his uh, failure but later hastily promoted him to general when he prevented the Emperor's assassination at the hands of the Shokan warrior known as Shiva. There's another Shokan warrior who's prominent in this uh, MK. Okay, aside from Goro, there are two others. Uh, is it Queen Shiva? Shiva, who's a, who's a female Shokan but strong, and Kintaro, who's a tiger Shokan. You know, he's like Goro, but his skin is more tigerish, you know, the orange, black stripes, and white tiger essence, something like that. So, with the emerging of Earthrealm and Outworld not yet com complete, with the merging, merging, with the merging of Earthrealm and Outworld not yet complete, Shao Kahn ordered Keno to portal back to the last remnants of Outworld to gather more troops for the final push against the Earthrealm opposition. So this guy is basically, you know, earning his paycheck in Outworld. You know, he's looking for more upgrades and uh, uh, something a bit... Okay, this guy is a psychopath. <laughs> and something weird is that you can see his necklace, it's, it's not a normal necklace now. It's like, a, it has a hair lock, a lock of blonde hair. 
which I think it's uh it's actually Sonya Blade's lock of hair, something like that. So I guess he is into Sonya, I guess, I don't know, but this is some sort of weird way to express your feelings. Do not be a creep on the girl or, or guy you want to be with, I don't know. Um, <laughs> that was weird. Oh, and I don't prefer this costume as compared to his previous one. I prefer the previous white costume he had. This actually shows is more brutal. Okay, it makes him seems more brutal because of the hairs. You know, he seems like a more brutal killer here. So, Raiden. I don't think we've left anyone up. So, Raiden. The first Raiden. So. Come on. This is the best costume, man. <laughs> I said I liked his previous one, but once I took a look on this one, this one looks... Uh, cool. So, Black Lightning here <laughs> consulted the Elder Gods. Okay, he's not black. What the hell? The Elder Gods were fully aware of the potential damage the alliance between Quan Chi and Shang Soon posed to the stability of the realms. Yet even with the foresight, they all stood firm on their decision not to interfere. The Elder Gods usually do not interfere in any of the human uh, skirmishes. They just sit there on their thrones looking down at us, you know, like uh, they might see you going to do a mistake, but they'll just consult Raiden and Raiden will consult them back, you know, it's like a back and forth between Raiden and the Elder Gods to decide on what they, sh uh, what they should do to stop you from doing that or I don't know. But before they come to a conclusion, most of the time, they'll find that everything is a mess. So the Elder Gods are just huge people looking down on us humans. <laughs> So, all that is except for one, Raiden, the former god of Thunder, pleaded with his fellow elder gods to take action, but they refused, you know, they usually refuse, like, are they like the Olympians in Greek gods? No, the Greek gods usually interfere lots of times, <laughs> in, in weird and disgusting ways sometimes, I don't know. Uh, so, Raiden was disgusted, he relinquished his elder god status returned to earth and gathered the supporting okay gathered the remaining earth realm forces to prepare against the coming storm so even relinquished his elder god status he didn't feel honored by his fellow elder gods so he decided to not be one of them anymore so yep that was raiden costume 10 over 10 mm -hmm. this is the first costume of reptile yep this is way better than this previous one but still, he seems like he wants to eat someone. You can see him salivating, you know. He can't help it. He wants to devour something. I hope it's not us, the viewers, you know. If he tries to do that, we'll just punch him into oblivion. Yep. But I kinda like the... No, not I kinda. I like the current version of uh, Reptile in MK1. Okay. Reptile had discovered the plot devised by Shang... Damn aeroplanes. Reptile had discovered the plot devised by Shang Tsung and Quan Chi to assassinate Shao Kahn. But on his way to, to report to the master, he was distracted by a vampire woman named Nitaro. Yo, Nitaro was probably too cute for him to see. He had never seen such beauty. He got distracted and Shao Kahn got destroyed as he was distracted. <laughs> Nitaro led Reptile to the hidden base camp of Kitana's forces. Knowing the location of the um, of the base would be a great help to the Emperor in the war against the Etania and the Shokan. That's what he thought. Now, eagerly to even eagerly to relay both of the information they had gotten to Shao Kahn, he raced back to Shao Kahn's fortress only to find him lying dead on the throne room floor. So he learned uh, two huge bits of information only to find his superior dead but we all know in reality Shao Kahn doesn't die that easily so but in this narrative he's dead so assume he's dead so hmm. so I like reptile in this version I mean the costume it looks like he's wearing his uh, original costume but his flesh is more reptile looking 
his current version okay reptile has a cool ability apart from acid spitting he can shape shift and he can turn invisible so he's a predator in a way so and in mk1 he's more humanish and his backstory is fleshed out more in mk1 the current mk1 the, the new mk1 so yep i don't know should i be saying seven out of ten and things like that but i like this costume so we've checked out ken or raiden reptile sub-zero kenshi before going to a more serious guy like kung lao um, let's go to Jax first now hear me out i know they wanted to to present a chill version of Jax, you know as in when he's not with the forces how he looks like but you know he looks like a bouncer with a huge mortal combat chain i don't know that huge chain looks i don't know mm. i think i like it as much as the original i know it it looks weird to many people but i like it i don't know why but you've noticed that he has normal arms so i think this is a costume depicting how he looked before having his arm ripped off something like that so after receiving info from agent kensha about a new threat from outworld jack barely escaped with his life when a traitor destroyed all means for interrealm travel so how who's not a member of the uh, of the agency is actually a member of red dragon as we've talked earlier the outworld investigation agency was completely obliterated but with the help of the Thunder God Raiden, Jax eventually made it to Outworld to deal with Suhao, who now served with the Deadly Alliance. <laughs> Jax saw that he would show no mercy to the one responsible for the destruction. The hunt for Suhao had begun. So, somehow, along the way, his hands got ripped apart. So. <laughs> but I don't know why I like this costume. Even though I shouldn't, I like it. I beg your forgiveness. <laughs> so that was Jax. Let's go to Cyrax. Now this is the human version of Cyrax. He regained his consciousness. Oh, I don't know. He regained his human form at his ending in MK4. When Sonya and Jax helped him regain. You know. They uncyberized him from being cyberized. So just a quick fact about the Linkway. At a point in time. The Grandmaster, the former Grandmaster of the clan, decided that, oh, it will be great to have soldiers who do not feel hungry, do not, uh, you know, basically soldiers who are free from the human needs, you know, uh, food, clothing, shelter, uh, you know, human to human contact, <laughs> and other kinds of human needs, you know, he want, they wanted warriors that were not shackled by the the weaknesses of being a human being so they decided they formed the cyber initiative the cyber initiative was like a uh, converting the consciousness of a real life human into a cyborg like this is cyrax who looks like a human at that point but before in this other one you can see it looks like a cyborg so basically the cyber initiative were trans were changing their warriors transforming their warriors from humans to cyborgs so so as to be able to get better and becoming like more brutal and uh, becoming more deadly and something like that so cyrax regained his human form in mk4 but let's just read this part so a vampire named Nitara offered Cyrax a deal to return him to Earthrealm if he retrieved for her an object from the molten depths of Outworld. Uh, his cybernetic exterior was resistant to the harsh environment in which the object was hidden but only for a short period of time. It was a risky proposition but it was one that Cyrax was willing to take to return to Earth. Although he did not fully trust Nitara, he agreed to travel with her to the location of the mysterious object. I think the orb that Nitara wanted, you know, so as to be able to unmatch her realm from Outworld as a whole. Okay. I think I should explain a bit about the realm. Okay. Basically, the Mortal Kombat tournament, I'm just going to go by first. The Mortal Kombat tournaments were held so as to be able to determine 
how one realm could be superior to another. For example, let's say Outworld is fighting Earth realm, as what happens, if Liu Kang lost to let's say Shao Kahn, Shao Kahn will get permission to merge Outworld and Earth realm into one. Now, the mortal combat is usually done between different realms if I'm not wrong. So, basically it's done to make sure that all, all of the realms are not combined into one. If they end up being combined into one realm, uh, something bad happens. If they are combined into one realm, they become like uh, the Kamidogus, which are like weird ancient artifacts, which are in individual realms. If they are connected, after the realms are connected, it gives rise to a being known as the One Being, who is literally, I think, more powerful than the Elder Gods. So, that's probably why the Mortal Kombat tournament was put in place. To scatter the Kamidogus and to prevent them from being merged together. So like the last hope was literally like Earth. So I think Earth was the only realm not merged by Outworld. Apart from Order Realm, Chaos Realm, Nether Realm. Yeah, I think. Edenia was already consumed within Outworld. But it was unmerged for some reason at some point in time. I don't know why. But let's go to... Hmm... Let's go to mock up first. So this guy is us. He's a human. <laughs> Can see he has some sort of some equipment he's wearing that actors usually use to make live action animations. Not live action. Make like some sort of animations or something like that. So mock up is a former martial arts teacher on the north side of Chicago. The man commonly referred to as Mockup was called upon by Johnny Cage to do some motion capture work for his new movie, Mortal Kombat, The Deadly Alliance. So Cage got fed up with Mortal Kombat, the death of Johnny Cage, and reformed a new movie. <laughs> so Mockup was flown to Hollywood to begin his first session, which consisted mainly of the crane and snake styles. I think crane is something like this. <laughs> the snake you go like... Oh. You know, you become like Shang Tsung, something like that. Yeah, I should be mock-up. Although many other martial artists were used, mock-up was brought in repeatedly for his vast knowledge of fighting techniques. This guy is just an innocent man living his life and making an, a decent living. So, yeah, let's not drag him into the Mortal Kombat world. I guess. You usually get stranded in Chaos Realm when you play as Shujinko in in the conquest mode in MK Deception. Yeah, I think you usually find him near one of the portals in Chaos Realm. So, finally, the guy will check as the last character is the original costume of Kung Lao, but it has a certain twist to it. You know, it, it didn't have this sash over here and the stuff, but it looks fairly distant. It looks almost the same to his original yeah i like this one as compared to the other costume so kung lao traveled to outworld and informed the martial arts martial arts master borai Cho of lukang's death at the hands of the sorcerer shang Tsung. devastated by the news borai Cho agreed to teach kung lao the flying kick that lukang used to defeat shang Tsung a decade ago so the training was intense you know he was training his right foot or left foot, I don't know, whichever foot he uses, he was constantly practicing that one flying kick. <laughs> the training was intense, but Buraicho was determined to give Kung Lao a greater edge than he had given Liu Kang, so he became a more powerful version of both himself and Liu Kang, you know, Liu Kang Kung Lao combined, he became uh, Kung Kang. Lung Lao, I don't <laughs> Once Kung Lao had mastered the whirlwind kick, both he and Boraicho uh, journeyed across Outworld to deal with the sorcerer Shang Tsung. So, that's why he looks deadly, huh? He has his heart back on, he's ready to slice some Shang Tsung meat. No, some Shang Tsung flesh. Do not misunderstand. But both of them are equally uh, good as punishment. Fitting as punishment for destroying his best friend. So, 
That was the Deadly Alliance characters. You know? Both their normal costumes and other costumes. But uh, okay, just to select my best costume, the costume I think was best in all of these was a. Uh, Of course not, not that. Uh, I can't, I can't place my finger on one. I like this one. Uh, this one, Sub Zero Raiden uh, original costumes. Uh, I'm going to pick five. Obviously, Scorpion has to be there. Like, look at that samurai armor, man. You one is iconic spear. Get over here! I want to slice your throat. I need your supper as mine. Ah, oh, that is cringe. Ah, those are three. I have to pick only five. So, where is Keno? But before Keno, oh god, I really like most of all the costumes here. Ah, uh, I like Kenshi's. Those are four. There's only one more remaining. Good lord. And Mavado isn't in any of them. And I literally like that character. <sighs> I haven't picked any female, so this one. Sonia. But just to be a bit picky, I like this one. Yo. So to, even though she's really a cunning character, she really looks cool in this costume. So those are my best costumes. So this is the character select. So you can see Shang was up here together with his friend Quan Chi. Those are the you know deadly alliance, alignment evil, you know. So these are the big birds of this game. So let's just check the rest. Limei who's a good person, status student, what the hell? You keep this costume among the best. Now I have like seven best costumes that I like. What the hell? Okay, Kenji, Sub Zero, Nitara, uh, Frost, Raiden, Reptile, Jax, Drachmin, Keno. I prefer his other costume. Mavado. Scorpion, uh, Buraicho, uh, Quan Chi, Sonya Blade, Johnny Cage, Kung Lao, uh, Suhao, Kitana, Cyrax. So, that was the, how is it called? That was the roster for MK5, MK Deadly Alliance. So, yeah. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, okay. I can't be able to play it now because my PC can't be able to record smoothly, you know. But I thought I would just talk about MK Deadly Alliance. And I'll I'll definitely talk about the the rest of the MK 3D games, you know, checking the contents and stuff. I haven't checked the concept as uh, yet, but you know we'll check them out later. So but for now thanks for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed this history. As you play MK1, now you have knowledge about MK Deadly Alliance. Yes.